this is Heidi Collinen, and I'm here to do a video blog for Simply Sexy Books. We're going to answer some questions and read an excerpt, and I'm going to give you a tour of my office. So, first, the questions. The first question comes from Freezing Kiwi on Twitter. How'd the whole moving schools and moving in together thing go with Kelly and Walter? More details, please. Um, um, I don't know that there are a ton of details. They moved schools to um, Minneapolis, and they there's not a lot there. There's a little detail in the... There's a free short called Frozen Heart on my website, and there's a little bit in there, but mostly they got an apartment and they lived together the same as they did in the dorm room, except now that they're now they're in an apartment and it has a washer and a dryer and no frat boys in the hall. So that actually is pretty boring, which is a lot of why I didn't write it. Um, sorry, I don't know that that's what you're looking for, but that is unfortunately my answer. Okay, now we have three questions from Editor Krista on Twitter. She wants to know who my favorite Muppet is, what author I would challenge to a dance-off, and Ben or Noel. Um, my favorite Muppet... Probably Ralph the Dog. For the piano, and just because he's level-headed. And... Well, Ralph. Ralph is my favorite Muppet. Um, I would definitely challenge um, K.A. Mitchell to a dance-off because I have... Well, I haven't challenged her, but I have danced with her, and she, I enjoy dancing with her. Um, she would win, though, because I, I, I... My knees get after me after a while when I dance. Um, I would never challenge Damon's Wade because I would never win. Um, ben or Noel, I have to say I never watched Felicity. I even had to look it up because I was like, who are Ben and Noel? Um, I've, I've got nothing. So you can have them both because I don't really know. Okay, Christina M. on Facebook wants to know if I use pictures as reference for the physical aspects of my characters. The answer is yes. Um, I used to find just random pictures from the internet, but then I would get attached to their image. And so now I generally go to stock photos because then it doubles as I can use them for promo and every now and again, as is in the case of Let It Snow, they used exactly my character reference pictures for the book cover. Um, I will include a couple here. This is Giles from the book, and this is Aaron, two of the leads. And actually, I have more. Um, this is Mina, Giles's friend. Um, this is Elijah. And this is Baz. And then here are Walter and Kelly, since we're in here talking about everybody. Um, I actually have more, but we'd be here all day. Okay, Ella on Facebook wants to know what my favorite time waster is. Like she said, when I'm not writing. Um, TV, probably. I watch bad TV. I, I have a thing for Teen Wolf. Um, I like good TV, too, but um, TV is a big one. If I'm, like, in my... If I'm, I have nothing else to do, like, or I can't get to TV or something, I do a lot of solitaire on my phone. I have a uh, Solitaire City is my app of choice, and I go to town on that. But honestly, if I'm not doing house stuff, going to physical therapy, or trying to find food, I'm usually writing or reading, and it's... Uh, it's really boring around here, honestly. It, the books are great. Me, my life is a little on the dull side. So, but probably TV, bad TV, or um, solitaire. Susan R on Facebook wants to know what my favorite thing about being an author is: pajamas, because I can work in them. It's pretty simple. I like I like pajamas for work attire. It's it's awesome. And the days that I maybe shower before my kid gets home from school. Um, pajamas. Last question. Colton on Facebook wants to know what my favorite Neil Young song is. I don't... Uh, none of them. My husband probably has ten. He likes all the music all the time. But I... 
I don't know that I could actually name a Neil Young song. I know that he sings, but all I can think of is Neil Diamond, and which I, is not Neil Young, but I got nothing. Sorry. I'm sure that's a disappointment also. <laughs> Oh, I think I said the last one was the last question. This is actually the last question. It just came in and I can't resist. Um, Carol RG on Twitter wants to know, why are my friends Carol RG and Fake Ted Jefferson so awesome? Um, the answer is Tina. Um, this is totally an in-joke thing. This is my daughter's um, godfather is Fake Ted Jefferson and his girlfriend is Carol. You know Carol from Double Blind if you've read all of my books because Carol is a real person and she really does spell her name that way and so she got featured in Double Blind and then again in Tough Love because she stuck around. So that is and the, the answer is Tina and if you are a Mommy Dearest fan that should be self-explanatory. Actually it might not even be. We're just that weird. That's kind of our thing. Tina. Everybody's Tina. Um... And now it really is time for an excerpt. Okay, I will be reading from Fever Pitch. Um, this is, I think, the second chapter? I'm not sure. It's in, like, a separate document. Um, it's early in the book. Um, this is the scene where um, Giles and Aaron meet for the first time. Well, they've seen each other before, but they haven't ever met. Um, they have been at a party, and um, Giles has been running from guys who want to pound on him a little bit. He did egg them on, um, and the reason that one guy wants to is because he doesn't want anybody to know that he has been a little bit intimate with Giles. Um, and Aaron is, well, Aaron will tell you why he is, where he is. Okay. This is in a laundry room, though. I should say that. We are in a laundry room. Um, at the door, Giles remained frozen in terror and indecision, but Aaron didn't so much as look up. Hunched dark hair over his eyes and arms crossed on his knees, Aaron stared at the floor and spoke in a tight, tired voice. Go away. Giles wasn't sure how to play this. While Aaron had never engaged in gay baiting, Giles wasn't sure he was ready to bet his front teeth Aaron wouldn't turn him over to the wolves first chance he had. From the second Aaron showed up at Albus Henning, Giles had seriously crushed on him. Hot as fuck, all dark hair, blue eyes, and fuzzy scruff on his jaw, his quiet reserve left way too much space for Giles' imagination. This infatuation, combined with Aaron's popularity, meant Giles hadn't ever figured out how to behave around him, which right now was a real problem. He decided to hedge. If you can wait five minutes to kick me out, I'd appreciate it. Aaron's head snapped up, and in the low light of the room, his bright blue eyes shone. Oh, sorry, I thought you were Colton. God, no, he's dancing on a table in the living room. Giles let himself relax somewhat. Why would you tell Colton off? I thought you two were tight. To this, Aaron's response was a snort as he lifted a beer bottle to his lips. Whatever. Giles was more confused by the second. Why are you in here, anyway? Aaron tossed the air with his bottle. Oops. Aaron toasted the air with his bottle and a black smile. Because it's my birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Giles frowned. Sorry, I don't get it. Me either. Aaron tipped his head against the wall and shut his eyes, allowing Giles an ogle of that gorgeous throat, the tiny tuft of hair at the front of his t-shirt, the line of beard shadow, and the beautiful bulge of an Adam's apple. Blue eyes open, fixing in soft squints at Giles. I know you. You were in my calculus class? In physics, Giles waved. Giles Mulder. Aaron gestured drunkenly back. Aaron Seavers. I know. Jesus fuck, but Aaron was hot. Hot and slightly aloof. Giles wanted to put the guy on his knees and make him moan. Stop. Get out of this with all your teeth and bones in place. So, you spend all your birthdays in the laundry room, or is this one special? I'm having a better time in here than I was out there, or anywhere. I'm having a particularly miserable life at the moment. Wincing, Aaron took another drink. Shit, that's pathetic. You should probably go. I think if I leave right now, I'll go home in a body bag, or at least on a stretcher. Now it was Aaron's face screwed up in confusion. Why? Eric Kampf and his buddies are playing Hunt the Fag. Plenty of other people would be happy to join in if they heard about the party game. Please don't say you want to be one of them. Aaron shut his eyes. I hate this town. I should be glad I'm leaving it tomorrow. Aaron was leaving? Giles snuffed off the waft of disappointment. Like it mattered. We're all leaving in a month and a half. Also, just because Hottie is talking to you instead of hitting 
you doesn't mean you have a new bestie. Where are you going tomorrow? To hell, Aaron drained the last of his beer. Eden Prairie with my dad. He'll nag me all summer, plus I have to avoid... His whole face shuddered, and he didn't say anything more. Okay, touchy subject. New topic. Where are you going to school in the fall? Swearing under his breath, Aaron tossed the beer bottle across the room. I need another drink. Unless you want fabric softener, I think you're out of luck in here. Seriously, where are you going in the fall? I don't know. Giles stared at him, not quite sure what to do with this. Dude, it's June. June 21st. Yes, I know. Birthday, remember? Aaron covered his face with his hands. I don't know where I'm going. I can't decide. My dad's going to rag my ass about whatever I choose, and they all look the same. It's my goddamned 18th birthday. I never got dinner. I don't know where I'm going to college. I'm drinking in a laundry room at the most boring party in the world. My ride home is smashed and dancing on tables, and I'm out of alcohol. Well, I can't help with the alcohol or college, but I could give you a ride to a drive through on the way to your house. Giles expected to be laughed at, but Aaron took him seriously. For real? He seemed briefly hopeful, then looked away. I don't want you to bug out of the party because I'm being a loser. Did you forget the part where I'm hiding out because beating me up is about to be the evening's entertainment? Oh, right. Um, yeah, if you're offering and don't mind, a ride would be great. I don't live too far, so it shouldn't put you out. But I'm taking you to dinner first, right? Giles stepped closer and held out a hand. Need help? You don't have to take me out. Aaron sounded like he wished someone would. Hey, it's your birthday. The least I can do is buy you a Frosty. Aaron frowned as he accepted Giles' hand and rose gracelessly to his feet. Wendy's is in Anoka. Whatever, it's only 15 minutes. Besides, I could use an order of fries. When Aaron only grinned at him stupidly, as if Giles had offered to scale a mountain for him, Giles added, I think you could use more water and less beer. Yeah, Aaron listed on his feet. No dinner, four beers in three hours. Dumb. It's your birthday. You're allowed. Aaron laughed, leaning into Giles. What, do I get a free pass on everything because it's my birthday? Letting the comments soak in, Giles tried to decide if Aaron Seavers was hitting on him or not. Aaron nodded to a shadow in the corner of the room. Hey, is that a door? By God, it was. A side door with a clear, straight view of the street. And if he squinted, Giles could see his car. Aaron Seavers, I fucking love you. Giggling, Aaron nudged him. Come on, we haven't even had a first date yet. Giles's jaw dropped, but before he could wrap his head around Aaron Seavers, Colton's best friend, hitting on him, Aaron grabbed his hand and tugged him toward the exit. Let's go. If you love me, you can buy me a Frosty and fries. How was he supposed to say to that? In the end, Giles said nothing, only let Aaron lead him out of the party into the night. That's the end of the excerpt. Okay, this is my office. Um, this is, well, it's not very big, so we're going to do a lot of turning around. This is my cat, Glenda. And then over here is my cat, Sam. There's usually somebody there also, and often another cat right here. Um, here is, um, Paul Richmond sent me a print that I could frame, and then a friend of mine framed it for me. So that's my first book, first cover. Um, and then that's my, this is my writing closet. Oh yeah, light. That was from RT last year. It's just still sitting there. Here's all my paperbacks and promo stuff, and then things I should go through. All kinds of random stuff, but mostly this is all writing in here. Um, this is my marker board. It's got notes for Lonely Hearts on it right now. And um, you, it, when books get thick, I, I, it, this gets pretty intense. I look a lot like John Nash. Um, this is where I sit and do the work. Um, what's on my computer right now? I have the world's biggest computer because I like to put both manuscripts side by side. Um, and then these are little Trotskys. My daughter made me this customized My Little Pony of Toothless because I love Toothless. And then I got my own actual Toothless for my birthday. That was the one present I wanted. Um, um, Dan got me that little blue track. That is from Marie Sexton. This is from my daughter, my birthday card. Um, also from 
my daughter. Um, let's see, there's, I don't think there's anything else super interesting. Oh, this is from a roommate in college. Oh, that's just because obvious. Um, these are my t two favorite stuffed animals from when I was a kid. And then those are all my books. I think we're out of interesting things. This is the view to my backyard, which I never see because I always keep these curtains closed. So there it is. That's my office. You've been all the way around. Hope you enjoyed it. That pretty much concludes my guest video blog at Thinfully Sexy Books. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy Fever Bitch if you have not enjoyed it already. I can't remember at this exact second if this is coming out before or after. But um, I'm working on book three now and there will be a book four and a book five and there's one couple that I don't know. They might be a novella, they might be a novel, they might just sort of hitch together while other people are doing things. I don't know. It's kind of hard to get everybody to line up and take their turn while they fall in love when they're all like in a big pile, but we'll, we'll see. Um, thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.